Yeah, okay, so uh, we are live now. It's the first weekly live with Alex. Uh, today, one of the uh, topic that I'm sharing will be how to de determine which is better, freehold versus diesel. So from uh, this week, every Saturday, okay. I will do uh, Facebook live. live. Now, it's the first uh, of course, what we are doing today is very simple. I will only have a 20 to 25 minutes sharing on this particular bike and of course end of day uh, later on we will uh, wait, I just mute. the last part we will have q and a that you can have some questions that you if you have some uh, burning question that you want to ask okay so for now i will just keep start the the, the sharing session first okay so today what are we talk, going to talk about so the main key topic that I'm going to talk about is definitely uh, freehold versus leasehold, which is better. I mean, this is one of the biggest uh, 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 thing that we always think about, which uh, comparing these two, which is a better uh, property that we should buy. Uh, a lot of buyers have been asking me uh, whether freehold is better or leasehold is better. So I've found a lot of interesting fact uh, after all the research that I've done. Uh, what I'm going to share with you is that I'm going to share with you some example of a freehold versus leasehold. Uh, two examples. Then later I'm going to share with you the next one is what is the factors to have the higher profit between these two properties. So last part will be Q&A. Okay, so I will go straight into the point. So if you, if you look at this, I'm going to share two examples about two projects that's very nearby. First one is actually urban residences and uh, Minton. If you look at it, very clearly, uh, urban residences is actually a freehold and Minton is actually a leasehold from 2007. So if you look at why I take these two as a comparison, because they are actually right next to each other. If you can see from my cursor, uh, Minton is here, urban residence is here. Okay, But we will see what is the outcome of these two property, uh, comparing these two property, what is the, the outcome that uh, we have uh, within the last uh, 10 years that we are talking about. If you realize when from the launch, Minton was at about $800 per square foot. It go up to the highest point at about one three. But if you realize for urban residences, the price actually didn't move much from, it was from about 1,002 plus per square foot. And it only moved up to about, at the range of about, still at about 1,002 to 1,003 dollars per square foot. So uh, if, if you realize in this scenario, uh, the leasehold actually make much more money. Later, I'm going to show you some of the profitable transaction. Uh, of course, after the search, uh, the prices have been stagnant, which I have been sharing with a lot of my clients and agents that one of the main thing is that when you see, uh, usually from the launch time to the TOP, there will be a surge in demand at the TOP. That's why the prices of the property go up. So uh, later, I'm going to uh, go more in depth into uh, very, very key messages that I'm going to pass to you guys. Uh, what are the key things that we want to take note uh, if you are looking for a property itself? So if you realize uh, for, for uh, these two examples, the freehold didn't really perform well. Uh, from the time when it launched until today, the price actually didn't really move much. And one of the key factors is also, you can see the dots. Uh, all the dots are actually based on the transaction, which means for urban residents, because it's quite a very... It is a very small development. Uh, throughout all these years, uh, there isn't any transaction that we are, we, are, we are seeing at all. Okay, So now we go into the profit. If you see this for Minton, you can see that there is a lot of owners that make money. Uh, a total of 211 transactions. But uh, there's, of course, definitely still a lot of owners that are sitting on the profit and they didn't sell. So when they didn't sell, it will not be reflected in the profitable transaction. So what I'm trying to say here, you see, most of them make a, more than 300,000. And, and there's a lot who, who I, I didn't have the, the, the space to put all the, all the profitable transaction together. But in fact, if you look at it, there is quite a good number that make a good amount of money. But if we compare to urban residences, which is a freehold development, the whole transaction, there's only one profitable transaction at $119,000. So in this scenario, if you are talking about more of like a, a newer properties, uh, if you can realize that the freehold, the leasehold actually outperformed the freehold. So uh, for new properties, my 
looking at my research, my preference will be on the uh, leasehold property. But of course, there is still other factors that at the end of the sharing, I'm going to run through with you. So what are the key factors that we want to look at if we are talking about freehold versus leasehold? So uh, what I'm trying to show you here, and after all my research that I've done for the past uh, one week, uh, what I realized is that there is no definite answer like uh, you buy a freehold, you'll definitely make money. Or you buy a leasehold, you'll definitely make money. There's still a lot of factors involved if you're talking about freehold or leasehold per se. Okay. So next, I'm going into another project which is in uh, Upper Bukit Timah area, which is Springdale and South Heaven one. If you all know where is it, uh, it's actually near to the Bukit Timah Natural Reserve. Later, I'm going to show the map. And if you can see, Springdale is a triple nine, which is as good as a freehold. And South Heaven one is a 99 year leasehold from 1994. I'm taking example that is, uh, usually I try to take example that is very close. Uh. If you can see, uh, I will go back to the slides uh, here, uh, which Minton and urban residences, uh, if you can realize that uh, their TOP date is very near. So I try to take project that is very close to each other, their age, uh, to take a comparison because if not, it will not be a very, very fair comparison that we are talking about. Now we go back to the uh, Springdale and wait, uh, Springdale and South Heaven. You, you can see their, their TOP is only one year apart. So age of the property, the, the uh, condition of the property is almost similar. But of course, there is also, uh, if you talk about older properties, one of the very main key factors that we want to look at is the condition of the whole development itself. So definitely, if you are going to get a resale, uh, you really need to go into the project itself to see to, to, to see how is the condition of the, the maintenance of it. Because all this will also affect your uh, sales price, your profit in future, because this is definitely one of the key things. Okay, so what are these, where are these two projects located? Uh, if, you can if you can see, uh, Springdale is here, South Heaven 1 is here. So they are right next to each other. Springdale is triple nine, and South Heaven 1 is a leasehold property. Uh, right beside each other, but you, you can look at this chart. Springdale from June 2016, I take a more recent transaction to let you see. Uh, uh, it is hovering around $1,000 per square foot, but today we are at about $1,200 per square foot, which means even in the resale situation, they actually see a growth of about $200 per square foot. But whereas for South Heaven 1, they are all the way hovering around to $800 plus to $900, plus, you don't really see a huge gain in terms of the profit. Because if you realize South Heaven 1 TOP in 1997, the lease start in 1994, which means as of today, their lease is already 26 years. It's almost touching 30 years old that we are, we are, we are uh, the, the point that uh, we are all very sensitive about. So looking at this, if you can realize, one of the factors is that if you look at the newer properties, the new one, uh, like Minton, the prices of leasehold property still have a good gain. But for the older leasehold property, you usually don't see much uh, profit or, or much movement in terms of the prices. Sometimes when the property gets older, you might even see a drop in terms of the prices. So, so it definitely one of the key factors that you want to look at is uh, the age of the property itself, especially for leasehold property. For freehold, uh, age is not a big concern, but of course the condition of the development, you need to really go and see yourself because uh, condition, if the condition is really bad, then uh, you will have problem reselling in future because the, the buyers who come in, they will look at the condition of the, uh, the, the development itself. And of course, another factor later I'm going to show you is uh, uh, definitely also very important. Okay, uh, Now we look at the profit of South Heaven 1 first. If you look at the range between two O, uh, I'm I'm taking as a transaction of profit that is between two O one four to today. So property that is bought between two O one four and today, in South Heaven one there is a lot of profit, uh, profitable transaction. But there is only one in particular that we see here uh, that is bought in two O one four uh, and sold in two O one eight that make a hundred and forty five thousand profit. Beyond that. There is no other transaction that they make money from South Heaven 1 itself. Okay. But if you go next, uh, for Springdale, uh, it's a very different case. Uh, if you look at it, uh, uh, there is actually four transactions that they make 100 over 1,000 to 200 over 1,000 uh, profit. And, and, and within this period of time, where just now what I've shown you, uh, the chart 
actually move up for, for spring deal, but South Haven 1 is very stagnant in terms of the prices. So what I'm trying to show you here, just now the first one is what? First one is leasehold make money, okay? Newer properties. Second one is freehold actually do make money also. So after all my research, I realized one very important fact is that property, it, it doesn't mean that you buy freehold, you will make money, or you buy leasehold, you will make money. There is a lot of fine details that you need to look at. So definitely, even based on your own portfolio, like example, today you hold a leasehold property or today you hold a freehold property and moving forward, you, you are thinking of, maybe you got a lot of plans, like you are thinking of changing your leasehold to a freehold or you are change, uh, thinking of changing your freehold to a new leasehold. So, so there's, there's many, many situations that you can be in. But definitely, you need to research based on many, many uh, uh, ways. First thing, your own current property. Uh, is it a freehold? Is it a leasehold? Okay, if it's a freehold, look at a lot of factors. Later, I'm going to share with you a bit more. Are you going to keep it or are you going to sell it? Or are you going to, you know, there's, there's many other ways that you can do to, to, to this property. So when you want to analyze your portfolio, there is many things that you need to look at. Your sales and also your purchase. Uh, looking at whether there's still upside for your sales and also looking at the purchase, how much upside we are looking at. So after looking at all these data, uh, then you decide whether you want to move forward and do something for your property. Okay, so now we look into the, the factors uh, that actually bring a higher profit to, to, to the development itself. Uh. So if you look, can look at these two, uh, uh, what are the factors that we are talking about? Uh, this is actually urban residences and this is actually Minton. If you look, can look at some of the things that I highlighted, uh, first one is actually the land size. Okay, for urban residences, just now you have saw the map, uh, the project is actually very small. Uh, so it's only 2,200 square meter, the land size. And for uh, Minton is 43,000 square meter. Although they are the same completion, the number of units actually have a vast difference. So I realized key factors that we want to look at, if you can take note, uh, first thing, the land size, which will determine the number of units you have. If you are a freehold and you are very small, the chances of the price going up is not high. And of course, you can look at, if we look at newer properties like these two, freehold doesn't really have an edge over leasehold because this, these two properties, if you look at uh, Minton, uh, is from 2007. Today, we are 13 years old. So it's still relatively quite young. So in, in projects like that, uh, the freehold doesn't have an advantage because if it's still within the first 25 years or 30 years of the leasehold, uh, property prices usually will not, will not see huge drop or, or that there might be still gain that we are talking about. Okay, so first thing, land size that we are talking about. Second thing, age of the property that we are talking about. So now we look at the other two comparisons that I've done just now. Uh, if you look at Springdale and South Haven 1, okay, Springdale is 26,000 square meter, South Haven is 11,000, okay, uh, and the completion of these two projects, 1997 and 1998, which means South Haven is already 26 years into a lease, which you can see one, one, one key thing here is when the, proper, when the prices of, when the age of the leasehold property start to run over, like 26 years, 25 years, 30 years, then you will start to see a slowdown in the growth itself. And second factors, for this leasehold property is actually relatively a smaller project comparing to the project that's beside you, which is Springdale. Uh, 480 units versus 157 units, okay? So if you look at these two things, two main factors, the land size, if you have a bigger land size, you will have more advantage. You, if bigger land size, meaning that you can have more units also. More units, meaning that you can have more facilities also. That's one thing. Secondly, of course, a bigger land size will have more end block potential, okay? Second thing, if we talk about uh, the age of the property, if you are buying a freehold, the age of property doesn't matter. But if you are buying a leasehold, you definitely need to look at how old is the property itself. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, round up the, the, the life because like what I said today, I'm going to share only a very bite-sized uh, segment. Every week I'm going to do this. Uh, so it will be more of like a topic by topic. We will not have a very long segment. But of course, I'm open to questions that uh, you all were... were, were will have, uh, then I can answer it live also. So summary why it's important, land size is important, number of units is important, 
age of the property is important for leasehold property. Okay, and definitely we are also going to look at the demand and supply of the area. In fact, if you look at property itself, uh, regardless is freehold, leasehold, or, or I have shared uh, a few times about uh, uh, project selection, unit selection, it's all about demand and supply. Because when a property get older for leasehold, the demand will actually drop. Uh, buyers like you, like me, sometimes you will be worried to go in to, to buy an older leasehold property. And secondly, if we look at a very small development, sometimes when you, I, I don't know, based on your own experience, based on my own experience, every time when I go into a very small development, I will feel that, wow, the, 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 it's, not, it's not like uh, enticing enough for me to, to, to buy a property there. When, whenever you go into a bigger property, you see the facilities, all these things will actually entice you to go in. So like what I said, the size of the project and the number of units actually determine what? Whether there will be demand. The maintenance of the facilities also will determine the demand also. So if you look at all these small, small factors, it is what? It is actually all the determining factors that we are talking about to, to, to drive up the demand. So once the demand is up, the prices of your property will have to go up. So likewise, share just now, there is many other factors that determine profit other than just freehold and lease. So it's not, it's not a, a big thing that... Uh, uh, like, like I keep mentioning about this, uh, uh, you buy a freehold, you are going to make money or you buy a, uh, you buy a leasehold, you are going to make money. Based on my experience and based on, based on my research, if you are going for newer properties, like example, a new launch, we will try to go for leasehold property. Why? Because sometimes in the market, you do see a lot of freehold properties, new one, and the prices is definitely a lot higher because uh, of the land, land prices, uh, all these factors that is built in. But if you're looking for older property, there is still a lot of good freehold property out there that you can look at at a range of below 1,005 per square foot or even some below 1,002 per square foot. You could have got one freehold property, but it's relatively an older project. So my take, new one, go for leasehold. Older one, try to look at freehold. But like I say, there's other factors that you want to look at, the facilities, the, the maintenance, all these things the demand around the area and the supply around the area. Okay, so for now, I will just uh, take this open up to the ground to see whether you all have any questions that, uh, that you all want to ask me as of now. I see, I can't see the question here. Hey, do you have any questions that you all would like to know more? Okay, if, if there's no question, uh, I'm going to, to share one last thing that is very important, like just now what I mentioned. Do look into your own portfolio uh, uh, because recently I realized one very important thing is that when we talk about our uh, last time used to be we buy property, we accumulate property, we continue to buy property, we don't need to do anything because we, we do not have ABSD in the market last time. But in today's market, we need, to, we need to actually do some analysis and of course, change our property when the time is right. Uh, depending on whether there's still more upside to your property, let's say, let's say doing your research, you understand that your current property may not have an upside of 100,000, but you see another property that there might be uh, uh, chances that you can profit 150,000 or 200,000 from it. So looking at this, then you might want to look into changing your property. Okay. So end of the day is what? It's not just about uh, uh, selling and buying property. You have to really go into very thorough research about your own property itself. Of course, there will be a lot of tools available now to let you run through all these things. And of course, I'm also open for you to ask me if you've got any questions that you don't want to ask here, you can actually drop me a uh, message directly or you can actually uh, uh, Facebook Messenger me to ask me based on your own property, what are the things that you should be doing based on your, your current asset? Should you be changing or should you be keeping all these properties that you, we are talking about? Or, or, or there's many other ways that uh, maybe you can buy under trust to, for, your old, new, uh, for your kids because your current property, there's still a potential growth that we are, told that we are, we are talking about for the next five years. So end of day, 
do do a lot of checks and do a lot of uh, I think there's one question come in and all they do do a lot of check uh, and also uh, 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 research before we decide on the next step that we are talking about. What are the comfortable premium for leasehold over freehold? So uh, this is a very uh, wide question. Uh, why, I, why do I say that? Uh, because uh, first thing, freehold versus leasehold, uh, it can be a smaller freehold, like a 40 units freehold versus a thousand unit leasehold. Okay. So if we are talking about this, uh, I, I'm, I'm not talking about, for me, I'm not looking at the, the premium itself. I'm looking at what? I'm looking at the the potential of the project itself so let's say a thousand unit leasehold just now you saw minton at one point the price actually shoot up higher than the freehold okay because there is much more demand that we are talk talking about for the for the bigger developments but the, for the smaller one nobody actually realize sometimes you don't even know that this project exists okay so if we are talking about for my take if you are talking about a fair comparison of a same size development the freehold maybe you can look at about 150 to 200 dollars per square foot higher then then there's something that you can you can really really want to consider okay uh so one of you asked i buy a kin to buy m block potential property and she's looking at all freehold property may i know what is your advice so if you talk about m block potential uh is uh i have i have went to courses to to study how do we see what are the properties that have higher m block potential there's a lot of things that we look at uh whether how, how many units they can build in future, what are the profit they can they can look at all these all these things that we study. But sometimes we do realize a lot of projects that is being en bloc is not those that we we actually selected and we feel that have the highest potential. Uh, for me, my take en bloc is not a it's not a it's not a sure thing. It's it's more like a sometimes it really depends on a bit of luck that we are talking about. You, you if you have seen the last few en bloc that happened. A lot of them are actually leasehold property, and a lot of them are actually HUDC last time. Okay, so so we we really do not know what are the properties that have uh, uh, a good potential. We can we can we can do research and find that all oh, these property have uh, more potential than like property A have more potential than property B, but in the end property B go and block. So chances of of us uh, getting a project, uh, putting our money in for M block potential property. Let's say we buy a. a lease whole property for M block potential and the, if it doesn't go M block, what is going to happen? So what I'm trying to say is that uh, M block is something that we can't detect. So why not just do your research and go for something that have a higher chance of appreciation. If M block happen, then jackpot. Okay, but if M block don't happen, you still can sell for a good profit. Uh, that is uh, the advice that I, I would I would give to to all the customer and all the clients and all the agents itself, because uh, you you want to be very safe in your in your in your property investment. Uh, so we definitely want to go for something that have good chance of appreciation appreciation rather than we go for something that have a, a good end block potential because because we can't detect for that. Okay, there's another question. So for own stay and yet also I make money. Should buyer enter freehold and stay long to get pet, capital appreciation? Or buy leasehold and keep moving after a few years. So for this, it really depends on your plan. Um, like for me, for the first few round, uh, I would want to go for something like example when I'm first property, I, I definitely will not want to go for freehold based on my, my own uh my 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 myself. Like, I will not want to go for freehold because I don't know when will the price go up. Okay. So I would want to go for a brand new leasehold, which we have uh, we have shortly some of the project that at TOP, there is a good chance the price will go up. Maybe change it one round. Uh, every, every three, five years, you can do some changes, uh, get, make some money. And the, uh, maybe the third, fourth property, you can go for a freehold and stay for a long term, uh, which is what I plan to do. So like example, I bought uh, a few properties. Uh, after I sell some of them, I might, the next property that I'm buying, I might want to go for a freehold, a better location. I will renovate it. I will, I will move in. Uh, and, and I will I will stay there, but I have no intention to stay at this moment because it's like my home. Okay, so uh, my my take is when you are at your your early stage of investment, try to go for leasehold, change, make some profit, get out, and after that you can get a freehold, a good freehold because freehold usually is a bit more costly. Get a good freehold, renovate, move in, wait for the appreciation. If the appreciation come, 
and you, you would like to sell, you can sell. If you don't want to sell, you can keep it because you are not worried that the property prices will actually depreciate for free or property. Okay? Can let me see whether I got any question here. Okay, Ken. So uh, if there's, is there any other question? If there's no more question, uh, I will end this segment, um, which is about 20, 30 minutes. Uh, so I will see you all next week. Uh, for now, I will be doing, uh, for the circuit breaker time, I will be doing every Saturday. Uh, but after circuit breaker, I might be doing on a weekday night. So I will, I will, I will update you all on my page and update all of you. I wish you all the best and great health. I see you all soon. Bye-bye.